is no cheap way to connect an Arduino Uno or clone thereof to the internet than using an ESP8266 module. But these two don't go together easily. I'll show you five ways how to do that. Now, first one is a level shifter, also called a level converter. Uh, that'll be just a couple of CMOS uh, transistors and those will take care of the level shifting. Now, these things really come cheap. I'll link in um, a good source for them down below in the comments. Trouble is that the Arduino puts out 5 volt levels and the ESP8266 uh, is a 3.3 volt device which does not tolerate 5 volts. Uh, so there's this level shifter and I feed a 5 volt signal into it, a uh, triangle wave as you can see here. And you can see the level shifter cut it off at 3.3 volts clearly. So if we're going digital, you see a perfect waveform being input at 5 volt level, output at 3.3 volt level. So the beauty of this level shifter is that it's bidirectional, so it works both ways. So you can also feed a proper uh, 5 volt signal to your Arduino from the ESP. Option two is to connect it with a transistor, and I'll show you how. Now this circuit is called a voltage follower, because the output voltage follows the input voltage. But there's a twist. Uh, the output voltage can only follow up to the point of the supply that we give to the transistor. And we can see that on the scope as well, so it also cuts out at like 3.3 volts, where we have our um, a supply voltage to the transistor, to the collector of the transistor. And if we switch to digital, we can see clear rectangular waves. Next up, option three. Now for that we need a resistor and a zener diode. And here's how it's done. So the resistor limits the current that it's fed to the other side of the, of the circuit. And that's where the Zener diode comes into play. It, it's got a breakdown voltage at, of 3.3 volts and becomes conductive there. So it practically clamps down the voltage uh, to that value. Uh, we can see it, as, it does not set in as uh, harshly as, as the other circuits that we've seen before, but this, this breakdown happens more slowly. But if we switch to a rectangular signal, we see that it puts out a perfectly usable uh, square wave of the, of the proper level that we need. Option four is uh, a voltage divider with two resistors, and that's how it works. Well, the voltage divider is probably the most profane um, circuit that we got here. I didn't have the right values in my uh, in my parts bin, so I had to make up one half out of two, but that's perfectly fine. So what happens now is this voltage divider just splits the voltage and it does behave differently from all the uh, circuits that we've seen before in that uh, the ratio between the two voltages always remains the same regardless of the level. We can see that nicely in a uh, triangle wave but if we switch to square wave we see that the result is a perfect square wave at the proper level so that works a treat. Now for number five. No, there is no number five. What you read on the internet is wrong. Um, on some forums they say you can just connect it with a piece of wire. It's way out of the specifications and you should never do that. Um, of course, the ESP has the usual uh, ESD uh, protection and it's got snapback uh, protection circuit, but uh, that's not the way to do it. It's way out of the specifications. And 
then you might think, hey, there's a 3.3 volt uh, socket in here. Maybe I can use that to drive my ESP8266 module. No, you can't do that because that thing will only deliver like 50 milliamps while legend has it that the ESP module can suck up to uh, 200 milliamps uh, from the power source and that's way beyond the specifications of any Arduino or clone thereof. So I'm afraid it was not five options, it's only four really, but I think you should get away with it. Is that exhaustive? No, it isn't. There's line drivers and stuff, there's lots of other options, but I think you get away with those four that I just showed you and well, have fun making your own stuff.